Okay, Al here from Howling Dingle Crafts, okay? My little company, right, was just essentially like just a small hobby, really. Um, that makes leather gear. It's called Howling Dingle Crafts, right? And the reason I used that name and I didn't call it anything else um, is years ago I was camping in the bush, right? I was actually working in a farm in a remote area. And every night we used to go and we used to... <laughs> We were smoking cigars at the time. Uh, we had a box of cigars and we had some nice malt and we had some beer. At the end of the day, working in the farm, we sat around the, the campfire and you'd always hear these dingoes off in the distance howling, right? And to me, that was quite a unique Australian type, type of thing, okay? Um, it's just something you don't get in Scotland. And I just love the bush here and the environment, all right, okay? And part of that with my bushcraft is exploring some of the fabulous kind of natural resources in terms of materials that we have in Australia. So I'm just going to talk about emu, all right? So recently I got a few emu hides, okay, and I've been working with them. As you know, with my leather craft, I focus quite heavily on the pouch and different styles of the pouches. Um, and this emu leather is really well suited to that. It's a soft skin. It's a very stretchy, very unique leather. I've been hand dyeing it and finishing it with uh, a type of tallow made from a uh, camel and also with beeswax, right? I'm just going to show you a few little pouches just working with emu. So this was a little pouch I was wearing at the start of the video. And as you can see, it's intended to be worn as a neck pouch, okay? So if we look at the leather itself, it's a quite an unusual leather. You can see it has quite an unusual texture to it. Okay, so essentially it's a series of little dots, little holes. This is where the feathers were on the emu, right? Uh, the leather itself, I mean, every leather has its characteristics, okay? For example, kangaroo leathers, incredibly thin but incredibly strong. Um, emu leather, it's thin and it's quite kind of stretchy. It has quite kind of stretch, unusual stretchy feel to it. Um, it's quite well suited to small pouches like this probably wouldn't work so well for larger bags and those kind of things all right but it just has this amazing texture okay and this is just a product of the farming industry in the same way cow, cow hide is okay um so hand dyed really soaks up um the leather dye uses <laughs> quite a ridiculous amount of leather dye to dye this um and then the leather if you notice this is quite waxy so i finished this with tallow all right I use a product that's made from uh, camels, camel being a non-native uh, species to Australia. Actually, we've got the last wild camels in the world, all right, but they're not meant to be here. Um, so occasionally they're culled and people uh, use the hides and use the fat, all right, to make leather care products. And that's one of the things I use, all right. And that's kind of like an ethical choice. That's part of my sort of uh, ethos, if you want. So I really love this pouch, really great pouch um, I was just trying to get I wanted to be really interested in making a neck pouch but I wanted to try and get away from the Native American medicine pouch right and I really wanted it to be a neck pouch that wasn't associated with that um, every time you look I do a google search of neck uh, neck pouch leather neck pouch or something like that you get the Native American med medicine pouch right and I wasn't trying to emulate that I wasn't trying to copy that I was just trying to do a neck pouch for somebody who's in a bushcraft, right? Um, this is bone that's carved, it's vintage bone from Thailand. And you open it up, and again, you can put whatever. Uh, you can have some pipe tobacco in there for your pipe. Uh, you know, you can have small items like a small, this is an optinol knife, optinol number eight, or you know, you can have a flint and steel in there, or an Altoids tin, or similar type things, whatever you want, all right? Um, it's just a, another way of carrying gear is to put something around your neck okay um so there you go i thought i'm really happy with that it's really simple but just really really nice okay okay um and again here's just another one and this is again dyed black done slightly differently okay and we have antler instead of bone okay it's the same basic design okay um here's another neck pouch Okay, and this one's a different design, a little bit more unusual. So this is the emu here, all right, which is sort of like dyed a Brit tan color. This is feral Australian deer, 
all right? And this is a little bit of weathered kangaroo born, all right? And again, worn as a neck pouch. Uh, this was a little bit inspired by the uh, television program Roots. And at the start of that television program, they show you a little bit of African culture. And a lot of the Mandinka warriors, they wore neck pouches like this. So the shape, I took the shape from that, and it's kind of square shaped, all right? So it's a little bit inspired by uh, Kunta Kinti and Wits and stuff like that. But again, I just, just, just the basic shape of the thing, do you know what I mean? Being square, all right? And again, just very simple with the back, artificial sinew, okay? And again, just a small thing for small items, okay? There we go. Um, so I've done this sort of basic design of pouch in a few different ways uh, with kangaroo and wallaby. Uh, but this one is, this is very, very white deer fur, all right, okay, and then we've got a wraparound design, okay, and it opens up like that, all right, and again, this is mainly um, intended as a fire kit, but you, of course you can use it in other ways, right, so you put your flint and steel kit in there, and then this becomes like a little bit of a platform to work on to organize your gear and keep things organized, uh, I've used copper rivets, just to attach all these things are hand sewn okay and again you can see the texture there really cool really great material and just really simple closure comes around like that and just give it a couple of couple of twists at the back and and there you go so that's a, another style of pouch okay and again this is all finished with camel tallow and beeswax all right um really tactile really nice to the touch uh, this leather, I really like it. Um, again, here we saw, again, this is the coffee style pouch. I do love the coffee style pouch. And it's one of these sort of pieces of kit that really uh, originates in Scandinavia with the Sami people, all right? Uh, in the same way, you know, uh, the Putko is very much a Finnish knife. Um, the coffee pouch is very much the pouch of the Sami people originally, all right? And it's something that's really been adopted by people who are into bushcraft and outdoors, right? And originally this was made, the original versions were made from reindeer uh, hide and fur. Uh, and because I'm in Australia, and uh, this is a little bit of a joke, it's a little bit of irony, I use kangaroo, okay? This is red kangaroo, and again, this is the emu, okay? So it's just, um, just a really nice coffee pouch. Coffee pouches, you do not have to use them for coffee. You can use them for anything you want. Okay, you know, Tinder and stuff like that. All right, so that's quite an unusual coffee pouch. All right, uh, really, really soft, velvety kind of fur that you get on kangaroo. All right, this is a uh, red kangaroo, just as I said, and you know. um, this one I've just done with calf. This is not emu, but just to show you the difference. So again, the same basic design of coffee pouch, uh, but this is wallaby, okay, from Tasmania. And it's a lot more buffety and furred and stuff like that. Uh, it's a lot thicker because it's colder in that area, okay. So there you guys, a few um, little bits of kit made from emu hay. So a little bit of a look at what I do, uh, currently working with emu leather. Um, always a little bit self-conscious about shooting videos that are to do with crafts because um, I do sell my work, right? And I'm kind of like reasonably successful um, at what I do, but I don't want you guys to think I'm just always trying to sell you stuff, all right? I'm, it's just part of me, it's part of my bushcraft. Uh, I'm gonna share it with you guys on camera, all right? It's not really important that you go and buy something now, right? If you want to, that's nice. Um, but it's just part of my bushcraft, part of my, part of my journey. Um, my, part of my bushcraft journey, I guess, would be the phrase you would, you would use. And I just want to share with you guys. See ya.